Welcome to the So Verve Lounge, a podcast for modern entrepreneurs that focuses on digital marketing ecosystems for small businesses. Join your host, CEO and marketing director, Stephanie Rubio, as she brings you marketing tips with a shot of Cafe Con Dulce. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a bonus episode of the So Verve Lounge. I am so thrilled to be delivering these bonus episodes every so often. Not going to make any promises as to when you will be receiving them and when I will be uh, recording these for you. But when they do come, they do come packed with a ton of good information that is actionable, that you can get a ton of takeaway from. And these type of bonus episodes are really going to be more so about the teaching and not necessarily about a method methodology or a concept, if you will, because there are things in marketing that are just engraved, right? So as much as marketing is constantly changing and we're using new ways in order to reach our potential audience members, at the end of the day, there are things that are marketing related, okay, actionable things that are just engraved in stone. These are things that we have to do in order to deliver X, Y, and Z to attract that audience member, right? So last week we shared a new blog post. It is on content mapping, essentially. It is an idea of how we can create or outline six months worth of content in one hour. So we're sitting down with a pen and paper. We have, you know, we have a a goal. Okay, we have our goals and we have our objectives. So whether you plan out your goals each month, each quarter, biannually and annually, you need to first sort of establish that as the foundation here. We as marketers, we tend to sometimes get into the objective and goals of the growth and scale of a business, whereas that is very much a managerial and operational task. They, you know, they meaning clients or yourself with your entire team, whether it's, um, you know, your financial advisors, what have you, you need to take a look at, okay, so what do our finances look like? What, you know, what's the growth and scale of the business going to look like? What's that percentage going to look like on a yearly basis? What are the goals? Are we looking to hire more? Are we looking to bring on more subcontractors? Are we looking to expand to new uh, territories, if you will, to new regions, right? Are we looking to um, open up different storefronts or expand in that sense if you are brick and mortar? There's so many different goals and objectives that a company can have. Um, A goal and an objective could actually mean to, you know, uh, trickle down on how much money you're spending in your business. There's so many different goals and objectives. Not all of them are going to necessarily relate to marketing, but they will always affect marketing in some way or another. Um, If you're pulling back financially from um, an objective or a goal that you have, it's going to affect the marketing and sales department. That's just how it goes, right? Or if you want to increase sales and if you want to expand to a different um, audience or if you want to expand a product line or a service line, it's going to affect marketing and sales. So a lot of those conversations need to be had before we even get into content creation. And this is why you hear a lot of us that have been experts in our field of marketing and sales for as long as we have, we constantly tell you before you start posting on social media, before you start creating Instagram accounts, before you start getting into Instagram stories or live video and all of these things that we know we have to do on a daily basis, before you do any of that, make sure that the objectives are set in place. Make sure that you have a very clear vision for the growth and scale of your company and what that looks like in the next six months, in the next year, three years, five years, and what that projection looks like before we even get into the content. The content is important and we're going to discuss why, but if you do not have the goals set in place and the objectives of how you're going to get there, which it'll include marketing, but it, it, it will most certainly not all be marketing. You know, just to give you an idea, you know, um, 
we have a client here um, whose business has been very successful in the sense of, you know, we've attracted a lot of attention. Um, there's a lot of brand recognition. There's a lot of brand awareness. And there were a lot of leads coming in into the pipeline. What ended up happening, though, is that instead of the funds that were coming in from current clients and customers, clients may have sometimes this objective of, OK, so where am, where else am I going to spend this money instead of saving that money and putting it back into marketing, whether it's through advertising, video marketing, etc. You can't always expand service lines and product lines without first, you know, having a good and I'm talking about a good chunk of money. Um, for all of this wheel to keep turning because as you're creating new product lines and service lines, the existing product line and service lines and pipelines and how in funnels and how we nurture those funnels um, and, and the resources that it takes to do that, it's going to take up a lot of resource, financial resource. So again, it's very, you know, I wanted to kick this conversation off with that because I see a lot of people making, you know, decisions that are financially based as far as their marketing and they are not, they have no clue as to what their business looks like six months to a year from now. They, they're, it's not sustainable. And some of the things that they're doing, it's not sustainable. They're following, he said, she said, or, oh, so-and-so did this, or so-and-so is using this product. Um, you know, why are you using a very expensive email marketing tool when you can use the one that costs you $10 a month because you don't even have a, an email list of over a thousand people because you do not even have sales funnels in place. Why are, why are we expending, ex, you know, spending so much money on this thing when we could be using the $10 email marketing software that works just as fine until we get to, to that place. Okay. So that that's just to give you an idea of my train of thought, you know, we teach, um, we teach marketing here that is very, very cost effective. Okay. Because a lot of our, um, clients here in house are women in business. And we know that women in business don't always have a lot of funding. We understand that they're not always starting with a ton of capital. We understand that there's a lot, um, writing at stake when they choose as, um, mothers, as wives, as, caretakers to family members, so many different things happening in, in, in the life of a woman, right? So we understand that the finances may not always be there. So we always come in, you know, from a very cost effective standpoint, let's work with what we have until we get to where we need to get to. And then we expand from there. And it it's scalable when you do it this way, because when you start off, you know, big shot using these crazy products or tools, and you're paying all these things and a coach here and a, in a, in a mastermind over here, and then you're spending money in all these different arenas, but there's not a lot of money coming in. It's, uh, you got to really take a step back. Okay. So content mapping. So now that we've kind of talked a little bit and I've talked your ear off a little bit about the idea of making sure that your goals and all of that is in place, let's go ahead and get into the episode of content mapping. Okay. So the, podcast episode kind of came about because we posted about this, you know, this idea of creating content six months out. And a lot of community me community members um, enjoyed the article, we received some emails, some um, DMs, and we also received a lot of comments on Instagram regarding um, this blog post, because people struggle with creating content. They know, again, if you know your goals and objectives, they know what what the outcome that they need, but they they don't know how to get there. Okay. Which is why this is called a content map. Now I, sometimes you'll hear me in, you know, in podcasts and in interviews or in writing, um, in the content that we produce here in house, you'll hear me talking about a roadmap, roadmap, content map, whatever you want to call it. For me, it's the same thing. So you'll hear me reference the roadmap or content map. So for me, the content map really outlines the buyer journey. Okay, it outlines the buyer journey. Sometimes, depending on where um, your buyer may be, they can be in a position of, okay, so we're just learning about your service. We're just learning about who you are. We're just getting to know you. I, you know, 
you know, let's, let's put this like on a dating situation, right? Like they just started following you. They liked a couple pictures. They are not necessarily going to slide into the DMs as they say, you know, all they want is to kind of be in your presence and get to know you. Once they are in the consideration stage, that's when they start getting into let's DM each other, let's exchange phone numbers, okay, let's have conversation, let's do a couple of, you know, um, video chats, if you will, or let's do some voice chats, which is now very popular on Instagram DMs, right? So a lot of these things can relate to dating, right? When a buyer is in that decision stage, okay, so we brought them from the awareness stage where they're following us, they're liking a couple pictures or leaving some comments. They are considering us at the stage of consideration once they, you know, start getting into D- DMs. Listen, I would like to schedule a consultation with you. I want more information regarding your services. How much do you charge for this? What, you know, in what colors does this come in? What does the shipping look like? What is your return policy looking like? So when they start asking, asking very specific questions, they're already considering you as a potential, um, you know, entity that they want to collaborate with. Okay. So if you're a service-based business, if you're a real estate agent, they're already starting to think, okay, so this person may be the real estate agent for me. If they are looking for a brand strategist, the same, if they're looking to purchase product from you, okay, they have already been to your website. Okay, they have already searched your site, they have already looked at some products, and now they're going to ask, they're going to come back to you if you don't have an intercom on your site, for example, they're going to come back to you on social media via DMs, and they're going to ask you those questions that they didn't get on your site. Okay, which is fine. Sometimes, you know, some people will say, oh, you should ask, you should have all the information on the site so people can reach you. Yeah, sure, that works sometimes. But sometimes, you know, what we also could do, we also want to leave some info so that we can encourage them to also reach out to us. And it has to be very specific information because we also don't want to turn people away. Okay, that's just a side note, tidbit. Now, at the decision stage, okay, they are ready to make that decision with you and they are basically grounded gravitating towards you in in a very specific way. So if you are um, someone that has multiple services, there is a very specific service that they are looking for that you have. Okay, so they've they've already found your brand. They like what you have to say. Um, Number two, they've already asked you a couple of questions. And number three, now is when they're actually in that decision making uh, process. Now, the decision making process includes them being very knowledgeable already. Okay, they cannot make a decision unless they know, okay, what they're making a decision on. So do you know you can't pitch someone that doesn't know the the full bit, okay? The full description of what it is that they're buying to, what it is that they're purchasing. Okay. So when you're creating content, you have to think of these three stages. You have to think of, okay, so am I just building awareness in this in this content piece? Am I, you know, sending this out for people that are making decisions already? Is this somebody that is still considering me? So these are three stages, okay? So awareness, consideration, decision that you need to create content for. Okay. Sometimes we want to get them off of social media and we want to tell them to go to the email list. And even in the email list through, you know, funnels, we want to do the same. We want to teach them. Sometimes we need to, to, to give them some behind the scenes of who we are and what we're about and our why and our mission and our vision and our values. And all of these conversations sort of start wrapping up into our content. Okay. So again, when you're creating content, If you are not taking the buyer through these three steps, you are confusing them. You are absolutely confusing them. And, you know, it was so funny because sometimes we don't really notice a lot of things. Sometimes we don't notice a lot of things in the way that we're presenting our content. You know, I had a question uh, the other day. Uh, I want to say it wasn't the other day, but it was it was a couple months ago, actually. Um, But it was brought up the other day because while we were having our annual marketing retreat, which we do at the end of every year in November, I've talked about this extensively. I have done an episode about this. Um, You know, one of the things that I knew that 
as a company, Sober Earth Marketing Group, what we were doing is that we were not being very, um, we weren't doing a good job at, at explaining our services. We weren't explaining, okay, so this is the package and this is what you're going to get. Now, what ended up happening is that I created an opportunity for people to meet with me, not to talk about their marketing, not to talk about um, anything related to them and how we can help them in the sense of, okay, okay this is what we can do um, in the sense of how we can implement, but in the sense of, okay, this is the services that I bring to the table. You tell me if this is something that's that kind of gives you an idea. Okay, so this is what I may need. We actually go through each of our services with this individual that is interested in working with us. And we sit down for 15, 20 minutes and we will have a conversation. Okay, so they're looking for a web designer. Okay, this is the platform that we use. This is the amount of pages that you're getting. This is how we're going to do this. This is what the turnaround time looks like. This is what the launch project looks, you know, management of that situation looks like. This is how we're going to manage the project. This is how we're going to do all the deliverables. Like we go in through to everything. We go through certain key uh, points within my contract so that they understand that there's a contract, you know, all of these different things so that I can properly explain to a potential buyer because we're talking about thousands of dollars here, okay? You cannot make these decisions on the fly on social media. <laughs> you need to get them through the funnel. So once you have their attention from the brand awareness uh, stage, you then get into that consideration piece and that is when you want to get them in, in that warming up stage of, okay, we need to get them in a call. And how do we do that is through content. So again, when you're content mapping, you're not just posting another meme. This is why I always tell people, use stories, use Instagram stories. If you want to do the memes and you want to do the, you know, uh, music and you want to talk about what you did last weekend and you want to talk about where the kids are going to play baseball next Friday, you please use Instagram stories for that. Get them, you know, this is where that brand awareness and that awareness stage comes into play. This is a wonderful opportunity for you to do that. You can, they can see what kind of coffee you like, how dark you like your coffee, what you eat your coffee with, how often you drink your coffee, what are your favorite coffee shops, all of these other bits of your life that makes someone comfortable enough to then reach you into that consideration piece. The consideration and the, the consideration piece is really what social media feeds are all about. This is already where you kind of want to get a little bit more into that teaching spot. You want to let them know, listen, I am the expert here. This is how I can help you in your business. And this is how I can do that. Okay. Sometimes we will post brand awareness pieces on social here and there, maybe once or twice a week. But other than that, we're teaching. We want to make sure that they are making informed decisions. Enough with the fluff on social media. And I keep saying this and I, and I talk about this even about my newsletter because there's so much fluffiness, so much fluffiness. Okay. So yeah, you posted a really beautiful picture of a donut. Okay, so let's move that content piece around and let's talk about how that donut relates to business. Okay, and let's talk about the different things that you could eat a donut with. You can drink, you can have a, a coffee, you can have a hot chocolate, you can have tea. And what, what are those? Those are different services. You know, use your imagery to capture their attention and then in the captions and descriptions, move them into that opportunity for them to be like, okay, uh, okay, this is definitely the person I want to go with. Let me go ahead and schedule that call. And boom, they're in the, con you're in the consideration stage. Um, all of these things are content. Okay. All of these things are content pieces. Even a consultation with a client or a prospect, use that as content. Okay, what questions did the client have? How, what, you know, I, I'm working with a client now and we're partnering in the, um, in that I am going to be delivering, as I do with many, many agencies, delivering marketing services to her team and therefore their clients. And one of the things that I said, I said, listen, you know what we need to do? All these questions that are being asked, you know, during that negotiation piece, let's go ahead and write them down because all of these questions are great FAQs. They're great. What are your working hours? Okay. How do you deliver your deliverables? Is it through Dropbox? Is it through Google Drive? How Email? How am I going to get my deliverables? Okay. What if I have a question over the weekend? When will you be responding? You know, all of these are great FAQs. FAQs make wonderful content pieces. 
Okay, wonderful content pieces. Somebody that's in the consideration stage, reading a testimonial from a client in, in video form would be great. So when you are on a call with a client and it's a video conferencing call, or even you're in a, in a person, you know, face-to-face -face live um, type of a situation, grab your phone and say, listen, I love that you said that. Would you mind me recording you real quickly uh, so that I can capture this on video? I would love for you to get on Instagram stories to talk about how much my service has impacted your business. These are things that you can do. You don't, you don't have to think of content as a strenuous thing. What you need to do, and this is why I wrote this on social media. You need a you need a blank calendar. Okay? So first you have your goals and your objectives. You need a blank calendar and you need pen and paper. And what you're going to do is that you're going to take key dates within those those 6 months, whether it's holidays, uh, internal holidays and anniversaries, birthdays, important company holidays, uh, go ahead and jot those down. National holidays, okay? Those fun celebrate everyday national holidays that come around, one that resonates with you and your business, go ahead and write those down. Those are content pieces. Okay? Again, uh, when are you launching blog posts? When are you launching podcasts? When are you doing live video? Do you have a collaboration with someone? Do you have an interview coming out? All of these things need to be on a content calendar, okay? Now, again, sometimes when you're looking at this stuff and you're, you're thinking, oh my gosh, 30 days, and the next thing you know, this calendar has exploded, it does get a little overwhelming, but don't segment that on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so I'm writing content. Okay, so this is what my content map looks like for the next six months. Wow, that's a lot. No problem. Now I'm only focused on February. Boom, you're focused on February. Okay, what are we focused on? The first week of February, the second week of February, and work on Sundays. Sundays is a wonderful opportunity to kind of prep for the week anyways. A lot of us are doing that anyway. So whether you're like meal prepping and all these fun things, go ahead, okay, and use that opportunity to then boom, okay, we're gonna create content for the rest of the week based on this content map, okay? Sometimes you'll have to switch things around. Sometimes you'll have to, you know, move a live video to another date or uh, this podcast didn't launch or this blog post is delayed. All of these things happen and that is okay and normal. There's nothing abnormal about that. It's business. Okay. So all you have to do is move some things around in your content, which is why I personally like to create content calendars that are digital that my clients can then print out and have in front of them. Their team members can print out and have in front of them. And um, it's just easy peasy, okay? When you then create an editorial calendar based on your content calendar, the editorial calendar goes a little bit further into, okay, the times that you're gonna be posting, the platforms you're gonna be posting on, and then what that actual caption looks like so that when you're doing Instagram stories, when you're doing your Instagram lives, you have some content to go by. You're not just coming out of thin air with content. It's based on content that you have already done. And, you know, brainstorming a lot of these things is really going to be about your buyer persona and how they move. Um, a lot of people that are looking for agencies, okay, they, they are already aware of who's in the industry. So even if they have, you know, they, they, even if they don't follow you, I have a lot of my clients, I want to say, 70, 80% of my clients, um, most of them do not have personal Instagram accounts, let's just say, um, just to use a platform as an example, a lot of them don't have an Instagram account. A lot of them do not manage their own Instagram accounts. We do. <laughs> um, at least the ones that have personal brands, we manage the business and the personal brand. Um, most of them do not like social media because they just don't have time for it or, or maybe they love it, but they just, again, they're being pulled in so many directions as CEOs of their companies. Um, so a lot of them don't even follow us. A lot of them don't, don't even follow us. You know, I've have I've got a ton of clients who, you know, they're just like, okay, that's do you on social media and your team and have fun and leave me out of it because that's why I pay you to do. It, you know what I mean? So again, sometimes that awareness piece, that awareness stage is going to look like crickets. Like you're, you're going to be like, okay, where did this person come from? Which is why you need to go back to the analytics. And in those intake forms, ask them, how did you find me? Oh, I read your blog. Oh, so-and-so a referral. So the referral, okay, is an awareness piece. Okay. The referral is an awareness piece. They are already like, oh, okay. Oh, so you're referring me to so-and-so. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I'll definitely give her a call. Boom. They look you up on social media. They look you, they look up your website. They subscribe to your newsletter. Okay. 
for me, one of the key indicators that somebody is ready to make a buying decision is when they go on the newsletter. Okay, they've already contacted me. So they're like, okay, Steph, I really need help with my marketing. Boom. They go then to, okay, go ahead and put together something for me. Boom. Let's schedule a consultation so we could go over proposals, we could go over quotes, whatever, contracts. Boom. And then next thing you know, they're they're subscribed to my newsletter. That is a key indicator that they are already in the consideration stage. They're done. They're done getting to know me. They know that they like what they see and boom, they're already like really between that consideration and decision making. Once we get on the call and once we're off the call, they would have already signed. Okay. So again, you need to understand how your buyer moves, not how uh, Peter's buyer moves or how Annie's buyers move or so-and-so's buyers move. You need to look at your your client roster, you need to look at your customer roster, okay? Not who you want to be your potential client, unless you're like rebranding and you're t- trying to touch a different audience. Who has purchased from you? Who has been, you know, if you're a service-based business and you offer retainer services, which most of my clients do, some type of retainer service or uh, they offer some type of service, whether, you know, uh, a service to a cus- uh, consumer or, or B2B, you have to think about, okay, what is what does this person look like? What does their lifestyle look like? What do they do on the weekends? This is why we talk about branding so much because once you know who you're talking to, you can create content specifically for them. So if if so and so in your industry is like, "Oh, what is she doing? She's doing it all around." Don't 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 worry about what they think because you're over here concerned with your customer getting all of the leads, signing all of the contracts, and you're not worried about what they're doing or what they think that you're doing. This is why I always stress the importance importance of stay in your lane, mind your business <laughs> so that you can get the work done. You know, it's important. So I hope that this explained a little bit more about that content mapping piece so that when you're looking at this blog post that we wrote, you are have a better and clearer understanding of why it is that we need to do this, of why content mapping is so important to your overall buyer journey. Okay. Um, I wrote a, a, just to leave you with this, I did an opt-in for a client recently and it's a four part opt-in and uh, like a checklist, if you will. And we, we had, you know, when, once it was laid out, it turned out to be four quarters of the year. And I, 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 you know, I, I, gra- I grabbed the phone and, and I called them and I said, um, you know, because I love doing opt-ins in checklist form. I have actually, I just did another one for another client recently because I just love them. And so I called them right away and I said, oh, by the way, here are four quarters, you know, here's our content. And once, you know, it was laid out and once kind of like explain it to them the way that it would be laid out in content form, it worked. And so we already have an outline for basically the entire year, all the way through to, to quarter four. And now it's just about my, myself, my team, getting into the nitty gritty of actually outlining each month, each quarter, each month, and then each week. Um, and uh, that's when it gets a little bit more, we get a little bit more specific and in detail and intricate. But once you have the general outline, six months to even a year, it's smooth sailing especially if you have those goals already set in place, smooth sailing, okay? So what do you need, okay? Not taking a, taking away from the blog and looking at this, this bonus episode that I've recorded for you. What you really need to do is make sure you have your goals and objectives. Make sure you have a clear vision of who, okay? A clear vision of who that buyer is and a clear vision of how they move, okay, in that buyer journey, Okay, how it is that they're making decisions. Once you know those three, and once you have a clear understanding of what that awareness, consideration, and decision-making stages look like, then you move into that blog piece that we wrote, and boom, you have that uh, that ability to really make a dent in your goals and objectives. So like I said, go ahead and make sure you have these things in place, and you're going to be creating content like a machine. <laughs> And as always, if you need additional information about creating content, content creation, visit us on our website, sober.com. It is 
a hub of information. If you forward slash blog, you're going to find our marketing blog there. And as always, subscribe to the newsletter. All those links are going to be in the show notes. Subscribe to our newsletter because I'm telling you such good content pieces are delivered to you bi-weekly and you get first glimpse of any blogs that we write or any additional goodies that we have for you there. Okay. Otherwise, follow us on Instagram at sober. That's underscore.